This is Carrie Steller from In the Girls Corner, and I am very excited to be interviewing this fierce, fantastic lady, Miss Miranda Fear the Maverick Maverick. And when she is not coming up with new and exciting flavors, her pickle company, Prowler's Pickles, you can find her in a cage fighting and kicking ass. Miranda, how are you? I'm very good. Thanks for having me. We finally got this to work out. <laughs> I am so excited. Thank you for coming on and speaking to us about your company, your life. We are so excited. I saw your post with your t-shirt that said, I love pickles and I love Jesus. And I am a fan of both. <laughs> I love Jesus and pickles have become a new fan, a new thing that I've been in love with. So how did you get started in doing this from being a fighter? Yeah, so I actually grew up on a ranch, um, learned to homestead a lot when I was young. Like we made all of our own food. We milked our own cows, had our own eggs, our own chickens, learned to butcher our animals, learned it all. And pickling was one of those things. We'd make our own salsa, our own hot sauce, our own pickles, um, all that. And uh, once us kids moved out of the house, my parents never really did it anymore. So now every year, every two years, whenever we run out of stock back home, I'll make more pickles or more salsa or whatever needs made. Um, so it's kind of something in my wheelhouse I've had since I was young. And I made a post about it one time. I was like, oh, pickling for the family and posted it on Instagram. And I had a few people reach out and ask if I would sell a jar. And I debated it and then posted like a hypothetical, hey, if I made a pickle business, who would buy? I got several responses. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to go for it. I've been wanting to make my own small business anyway. Um, why not start a pickle business? My family has mentioned it in the past. So here we are. That's amazing. And not only do you make and sell pickles, you have uh, pickle juice. I saw you have a line of um, merchandise, which is amazing because you got to be able to sell your stuff and everything is so fantastic. Tell us about all of that. Yeah, I kind of made all the designs myself. I got help with some of the logos from AI, you know, this new invention of greatness. Um, but yeah, I've started selling my own merch on it. If you guys want to check it out, it's prowlerpickles.com. Uh, super easy to go on there. I have 11 different flavors, sweet, spicy, sour, traditional flavors, bread and butter, like all the above um, that you guys can go check out. Um, and yeah, the juice is also great as an athlete, of course, like it has the natural probiotics in it. I have turmeric in a lot of my juices, which is great for inflammation. Uh, and it's just like natural stuff that you don't have to put into your body with all these energy drinks and things like that to give you a boost. I know a lot of marathon runners and athletes in general use pickle juice to just kind of boost their immune system. And so I've started selling pickle juice for that. And also if you're an alcohol drinker or something like that and like it, I know a lot of people mix it with their alcohols too. So hoping to get into breweries soon and that kind of thing as well. That is so cool. I actually did not know that people <laughs> put that in their alcohol. I am not an alcohol drinker. Now is uh, pickled, pickles are fermented, correct? Some are. So I have a few of my flavors that are fermented where they literally are just water with spices that sit with the pickles and over time they become delicious. And I have some of my others that are more vinegar based, right? So those are the actual pickling. So there's fermentation and then there's like the act of pickling. So uh, that's where pickles got their name, even though some pickles aren't actually pickled, so to speak. Um, so a lot of my pickles are using the vinegar base. Um, so vinegar and salt to make the pickle last a long time. Um, I think it's Eight of my flavors are all like last in the cabinet, like five years, even though I'm required to put like 18 or 24 months on them. And then my refrigerator pickles, like the spicy barbecue, the sweet and sugary and the sour dill all last about six months or more in the refrigerator. That is amazing. Uh, very, very. Yeah. And what <laughs> are the benefits between the fermented and the non? Yeah, so the fermented pickles are all natural probiotics, where the non um, the non fermented, they're still probiotics because of the vinegar in them. You know, they always say to have a drink of apple cider vinegar, help your stomach issues and stuff, but they're not as natural probiotic, right? Like they're not just water and spices, boom, probiotic, like kombucha or something, whereas the fermented pickles are. Now, the vinegar pickles are more electrolyte, though. They have that salt in them. They have the sweetness in them that really helps with that energy boost. So there's kind of benefits and drawbacks to each and every flavor of pickle, I guess. And then if you're not, you know, sugar isn't a bad thing for you. You can have the ones with sugar in them and give you that extra boost. I know that I love drinking like the zesty bread and butter juice before I go and work out. It's like, whoop, there we go. One shot of it. And I'm really, you know, energetic, able to keep going, helps my cardio, helps my hydration. Now, 
you're you're a fighter. You're a professional mixed martial mm -hmm. artist, jujitsu phenom. I've been following you for a very very long <laughs> time since the days of Invicta when you won the <laughs> Phoenix Flyweight uh, tournament, which was just amazing. You've had a, such a great career. Is this just something you want to do for the future to have a future outside of fighting? Because I know we all have a shelf life, and especially with mm -hmm. mixed martial arts starting your body, and to be able to do this and that is is really incredible and that you grow your own stuff, correct? Um, not yet. However, I use the Mennonites that are nearby us in Missouri. So it's still like organic products and everything. Every once in a while, I'll go through the producers that send their stuff to Trader Joe's just because it's easier access here in Colorado. But when I move back to Missouri, I'll be using fully uh, the Mennonites that live near us, their produce that they make. Um, so that'll be great and have them making like the Persian cucumbers and all that to go straight for my ingredients. It's but so yeah, you were talking about, you know, having something else after fighting. And I'm huge about that. Like you see a lot of fighters and athletes in general, they do have a shelf life and it's usually very short or you can get hurt. There's so many things that could happen that can just end your career immediately or even in the UFC, you know, people get cut and then they're like, wow, I don't know what to do with my life anymore. And I think it's very important to have another avenue to go towards in life. I'm very blessed to have several. You know, I have my education be while I was going to pursue fighting, got my master's. I have a full-time job aside from my fighting already, plus this pickle business now. And it's busy and it's hard and it's hard to keep up with. And I'm like, I'm glad I don't have kids yet or anything like that. But the pickles is just another side hobby. I hope honestly to be able to pass it along to like my sister-in-law or somebody who may not have as good of a job right now and can take over a business and have a livelihood and have a way to make a living. Um, for me, I still have my job with the Hershey company. So the chocolate company that I work um, as a statistician for them. So that's kind of my day job. I get to work the hours that I want to work, but still work a full-time job for them. And I'm trying to pursue investing in the proper things as well. So I've kind of got a lot of um, irons on the fire, so to speak, that I'm trying to go after, but fighting's definitely not the only thing I'm pursuing. And it can't be if you want to be successful. And you clearly are and highly educated. I looked up your background before and I was going to bring that up. You have uh, one or two degrees and you are so smart to be doing everything you're doing. I did not know that you had a day job besides, uh, fighting, yeah. which is huge. You have to have something. And, um, <laughs> What is a statistician? <laughs> so I'm the one that does the math behind the scenes, right? So I'm a big math whiz and um, all the ads that you see, whether it's on TV, on Instagram, on video games that are for the Hershey company, um, like Reese's, Twizzlers, Jolly Rancher, Hershey, like all these different brands that follow under their umbrella. If you see an ad that's done of theirs, I'm the one that tests it and see if it works and makes people buy more chocolate or sweets, basically. We love chocolate. <laughs> we do. Me too. <laughs> Even as a person that works out myself, I have a sweet tooth and the, it's like so bad. But the amazing part is I've done so much research over the years and cut out processed sugar. And I mean, that the teeny little bit of body fat that I had cut 10 pounds I actually did it during Lent. Uh, last year, mm -hmm. I gave up coffee. I said, this year, I want to give up all the packaged sweets, the hostesses, and they're so bad for okay. you. But it really, what that would do when people don't realize for your overall health is it's incredibly amazing. And now I started baking my own stuff and trying to create my own food so I don't have to go and buy it out with all the preservatives and the stuff that we have that's not supposed to be in our food. Yeah. Well, good for you. That's awesome. I don't have enough time to be doing that. And I still love the processed sweets when I'm not in a camp or something. It's my sweet tooth problem too. Uh, but that's awesome. It's hard not to. Do you now you have like you said, you don't have a ton of time because you you're fighting, you're you have your pickle business. I saw that you won IBJJF. I got silver. So I got second at Worlds as a brown belt adult. So still pretty good, but I uh, didn't quite win. <laughs> second with doing a silver medal for me is definitely a huge win. And especially on a stage like that, are you planning on competing again? Yeah, I plan on it like uh, off and on, you know, when I don't have something coming up and when I've been training consistently and my coaches agree to it, um, I'm happy to jump into jujitsu competitions. I know for jujitsu athletes, they may get insulted that I say this, but for me, jujitsu isn't that big of a deal. Like it doesn't really put much pressure on me or anything. Um, like my first match at IBJJF, I had about three minutes to warm up. 
and literally went out there and competed because the weigh-ins and stuff went faster and we were ahead of schedule. For me, I don't really get nerves competing on that platform. Whereas MMA, you know, my whole life's on the line is how I see that my whole career, my whole future, not to mention my, my income, you know? Yeah. Um, so I feel like it's just, um, less options to get hurt too. Like I can always tap in jujitsu and be like, all right, we're done. You grab my foot wrong. I'm going to tap, you know? So I love competing in it. I still compete actively, especially for charity events. Like I've done a lot in Kansas city this past year. Um, and just given my purse straight to charity. And I just like doing it because I stay active, get to have that competition, that nervy feeling, um, without the danger involved. It couldn't be any truer. It's a very, uh, it's, it is a gentle art and you can, you can just tap out, live to fight another day, walk around tomorrow and not have a problem. Whereas say in a cage and getting in a mixed martial arts fight, there is so many variables of anything can happen at any time. So I could yeah. definitely understand. I've been doing journalism in this for so long and I've seen the ins and outs and ups and downs of so many different fighters. And you seem to have a very great formula. And clearly uh, you have a lot figured out that must come from a strong family and, and strong faith. Very much so. Um, I credit God above all with it, but I was definitely blessed to have a great family to not only support me, but provide guidance. You know, the way we were raised was very, not only hardworking, but with practicality above everything else. And knowing that the end goal is where we want to be. Like, don't look at everything just right in front of you. Think about the end of the tunnel. And I've had some really dark days and I've had some bad fights and I've had some times where I was like so poor as dirt, I didn't even have any money in my account, you know, and still thought and was like, I can achieve this dream. And at the beginning, people are like, well, you don't just do this for the money. And I'm like, you dang right I do. Like, it may sound weird, but it's like, I have so many other avenues I could take in life and make money or have a career. And I've managed to do it all at the same time as having, you know, a real career, so to speak. I know it's real anyway, but a lifetime career that um, it was worth it to just go after fighting and see if I could be one of the best. And I think I've proven that I can be and hope to stay in this top 15 and keep working my way up to the top 10 and further. I wish I could announce it now, but I just got a fight offer two days ago. I just haven't signed the contract. Uh, it hasn't been sent over yet or else I'd announce it here. I am so excited to one, find out who it is and to I can <laughs> hear who it is. And I will be sharing that on my platforms. Uh, and I understand why you can't, because I know that you have to keep that on the hush just in case. And then you sign the contracts and it's, it is an incredible thing to be able to one, be a fighter in the UFC as a female, have your own company and have another job <laughs> besides the energy from the pickle juice and everything else. How do you do it all? I, you know, it's hard to say other than I grew up, I've been doing it the whole time. You know, when I um, went to college as an undergrad, my first two weeks into college was my first ever amateur fight. And so I had a full-time job waitressing. I was working, doing full-time school as an undergrad, and I also trained full-time. And ever since then, I've been kind of doing the exact same thing. And I have my gear business that I do outside of the fighting, which is like just my t-shirts and stuff that I sell. All those designs are mine. I have my art business I have where I draw, even though that's more for fun on the side. I just, as my dad says, I need to pick something and focus on it. And I feel like even with how much I do, I've had to quit a bunch of things and leave a lot of things to go. And um, it's like a blessing and a curse at the same time. I have a lot of talents and I try to go after them, but I don't have enough hours in the day to really make them all successful. So I'm trying to go over a few and uh, focus on those and make my family successful along with my own success, kind of go out for whatever makes me the most money, but also gives me mental peace at the same time. And that is something you have to have, especially like you said, with such a busy schedule and so many things that you can do and have done. I was looking up not your life story, but a good amount of it to see what you did and how you got to where you are. And, you know, you started wrestling at 16 and gave that up. You didn't do that in college and you started pursuing your career in MMA. And it wasn't a very long uh, amateur career. You went pretty much amateur straight to pros and Invicta, which is incredible. And I was not shocked because, you know, uh, Shannon Knapp is a very intelligent woman and she knows a extremely talented fighter when she sees one. And you are, in my opinion, a phenom. Everything that you've done, everything that you've accomplished, all the work that you're doing right now, you are outspoken, you're fearless. 
<laughs> you don't you don't have a problem with saying what's on your mind, which is very, very important in a world where we're being, you know, quieted down and censored. And, you know, people would be, oh, do I say that? I have a business and you have no fear. And I right. love and respect that. <laughs> well, thank you. I see it as uh, people can support my values if they want to or they cannot. And I feel like my audience is big enough that share my same values that um, you know, there's certain things I'm quiet about and I try not to be too politically driven, but I'll never say, you know, I'll never hide that I'm a believer in God. I'll never hide certain conservative values I have. Um, and it's pretty clear for anybody who follows me, like kind of where I stand on subjects. I think we have a very similar opinion on uh, a lot of <laughs> those subjects, if not the same opinion. And uh, you, know, you have to be a little careful because in business more so than anything, but your friends, your family, the people that love you and follow you are going to, they're not going to care even if they don't have those values, but the people that are around you seem to do have the same or very similar values. I saw that Bryce Mitchell has re had reached out to you about him. He makes uh, Rose's own garlic for your pickle yeah. company and he is an amazing human being. So that had to be uh, pretty cool. Do you know him outside of MMA or is this a connection you got no. Just connection inside. So we still have to connect. He messaged me and then he hasn't gotten back. So hopefully we can make that happen. Uh, when I saw the comment, I was like, this is so cool. I love it. It's pickles are bringing people together. <laughs> and it's amazing. And <laughs> it's true. And he's a huge, you know, he's very, uh, he's a big, a big, I don't want to say follower, but yeah, a follower of Christ. That's a, it's, I call myself a student mm -hmm. of religion to me. It's, mm -hmm. you know, such a broad term that I kind of, what would Jesus do with my life? You know, I, I don't want to ever act outside of who I am. And, you know, we all have our little downfalls as people and that really work on it every day to be a better person. And that's, to me, pretty much the best that we can do. Mm -hmm. Yep. Always trying to be Christ-like. You know, I always say, you know, people are like, well, I'm a good person. It's like, none of us are good. If you truly believe you're a good person, you're not a follower of Christ at all, you know? And um, so that's kind of where I stand on. It's like, we always have to try to be Christ-like, understand we are sinners and know that the only thing that does save us is Christ and him, you know, giving up his life for our sins. Absolutely. And that's, a, like you said, the message, some message, the message that people miss, a lot of them do. They miss the, <laughs> we're students of Christ. Christ, Jesus was a teacher. So for me, I'm constantly learning and learning more and more. And I open the Bible all the time. And I used to go to church so much, but would hear what the preacher would say and didn't really look at it myself. And over the last few mm -hmm. years, I delved into the Bible as a whole and into other religions just to see what they're about. And I have learned so much and I find myself learning more and more every day. And the more that I learn, the more connections I make with people like you. And I get to interview yeah. amazing, uh, you know, just amazing people in general that have a similar mindset. That's great. That's great to hear. Yeah, I think it's very important not to just listen to sermons and stuff because that's how you get drawn into cults or bad leadership and uh, read the Bible on your own as well and see kind of where you fit in, you know, instead of just, oh, I go to this church. So that's what I that's what I believe. I think it's very important to learn on your own and sift through truth versus, you know, false, false teaching. And there is a lot of that. Now, back to Prowler Pickles. You do it all. <laughs> you do the design. You do the marketing, obviously, because you do that for Hershey. What? How? Like involved are you with everything? With picking out the packaging, the labeling, the everything that goes into I it. I literally this this is an at home operation right now. Like I literally am the one that chops the pickles, put the spices in the jars, shut the jars, boil them, can everything, put them in the packages. Literally write my signature on every single thank you note. Like. Uh, everything is done by me and my husband uh, helps as well. But right now it's small enough that we just take like a couple weekends a month and just pickle, pickle, pickle. And then I keep enough inventory to where I can sell them out as I get the orders in. And then we have to remake the batches and all that. Soon I'm hoping to get into an FDA approved kitchen, but I got a lot going on. So uh, right now while I'm selling online, mostly I'm going to stick with it here like we have an extra kitchen a part of our house that's like kind of unused I guess you'd say and so we use that as the business side of it and it's been working out great and gotten raved reviews about stuff and I hope that continues I am sure it will I'm going to be buying a jar of pickles and a jar of pickle juice because I want to try them both I am huge 
mindset. I love probiotics. I love uh, healthy foods that are going to not only be healthy, but they help you. They fix certain problems, your immune system, everything mm -hmm. comes from your gut. So I know that that's one of the most important things is to have something that will bring your gut health up and all of your other health should follow. Now, awesome. where can everybody find Prowler's Pickles? <laughs> prowlerpickles.com go check it out and it's just at prowler pickles on facebook instagram and twitter or x i guess is the new version of it so go check it out prowlerpickles.com prowlerpickles.com i will be sharing that in our caption i'll put it the link in my bio so that everybody can go and check out all of your amazing products your amazing gear your shirts again are fantastic um okay. i have a question about your shirts just because mm -hmm. i love Ask everybody, what fabric do you have a specific fabric or blend that you use? Because I know that fabrics carry vibration and all that good stuff. Yeah, it, it just uh, they're all a little bit different. I think I have it written down on there. Maybe not the specific, but most of them are cotton. Most of them are cotton fabrics. I like the really soft feel. Uh, so that's what I get, especially in the sweaters and hoodies so that they're more of like a, a thick version. You know, I don't like the thinner dry fit stuff for everything, but I also have the rash guard, which is mostly, you know, spandex. So uh, there's a lot of different options on there. I've got the tank tops, the t-shirts, the sweaters, the hoodies, and the rash guard now, which is the newest. I am going to have to order the rash guard. I ordered a t-shirt. <laughs> I love that it's made of cotton because cotton is a very high vibration. I think a hundred or something. Yeah. And uh, spandex, we can't help that. It's got its own blend and not that it's not natural. It's just not as high of a vibration, but it's really important that you take the time, specifically you take the time to, to see and, and create a product that has great ingredients and great fabrics. And you clearly have done all of the work. Like I said, you are a very highly educated, smart lady. And that comes from your background, which I knew that you were uh, grew up on a farm. I just didn't know the extensiveness. That is just an incredible story. Yeah, the, the, we have beef cattle now. Uh, we moved around a lot as kids and my dad would buy rural land go in, buy something that was pretty crappy, honestly, had a bunch of woods, more hunting land. We'd clean it up, make it a lot of pasture, build nice fences around it, an entrance way. And then we'd sell it again, get another place. So I worked really hard growing up, built tons of fins, learned how to weld, learned how to pound pipe, all of it. Um, and now we have a ranch out in Missouri in the Springfield area and we raise beef cattle. Um, and yeah, it's a work, work in progress every day. And my dad works harder than any of us ever have, which just keeps the hustle going. You know, I get to see an example in front of me. Uh, my, my mom and stepmom too are both very hardworking. So I had great examples growing up of hard work and effort put in and just try to do that myself as well. I am more impressed by you through this whole conversation. I was impressed by you by watching you fight. This is just <laughs> Incredible. Um, if there is anything that you can get out to our audience and to the world that you want to say, what is it? The floor is yours. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, one, find a passion. You know, people are like, I don't know what to do. I don't know what I want. Find a passion. See that purpose in your life and go after it. Uh, God will only meet you halfway. You know, you can pray all you want to do something, but if you don't take the opportunities he puts in front of you, it's not going to happen. Like, jump with both hands, jump with your heart wide open and go after stuff. If you can risk it, risk it. If it's too risky for you, that's fine. Take every little step that you can to get where you're supposed to be. Great, great advice for <laughs> anybody out there listening, young, old, because some of us don't have it figured out at 40. I'm 45. It took me a long time to get my life figured out. So I can say that that is probably some of the best advice that I have heard from a young woman and you are very incredible where can everybody follow and find you personally besides yeah for my of course my personal pages are at fear the maverick so my last name is actually maverick the whole nickname is fear the so at fear the maverick on x on facebook on instagram um i might have a tiktok too now but i don't really do anything on it so check me out on all those things and then my website is fearthemaverick.com i also run the website myself so i have kids clothing adult clothing uh memorabilia like autograph pictures and stuff if you guys are interested in that that is amazing and is there anybody you want to thank coaches family members training partners again the floor is yours yeah, I'll leave the training partners and stuff out. They get the attention on the fight interviews. So they'll be okay. But uh, thank you, the Lord above, above 
all. And um, of course, my husband, the rest of my family that supports me. And um, if anybody could throw some prayers my family's way, my brother was in a pretty severe car accident this past weekend. So uh, if you don't mind just sending up some prayers for his healing and um, everybody's emotional healing after this weekend, that would be awesome. I would and, and thank you, of course, to God, like praise God that my brother's even alive. He shouldn't be. And it's a, it's a miracle. If you're not a believer, if you see that wreck, like you should be. <laughs> I saw the pictures and I didn't want to bring it up. So I'm glad that you did. Uh, I saw the yeah. pictures and I saw what you said and I was blown away. And yeah, if you're not a believer of God, I don't know how you couldn't be hearing a story like that. And I will certainly be praying for your brother and your family because it's not just, you know, your brother going through it, your whole family's going through this. And mm -hmm. it's a very tough thing having somebody you're so close with survive something like that. Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, a friend, one thing, but your family and your brother is quite another. So, you know, we will be praying for him and um, for his speedy recovery and for your family and your well-being. And I am so grateful for this interview. And I thank you so much for taking time out of your day and speaking to me about your life, your fight career. We got a little bit of that in there pickling and everything i am just this couldn't have been better thank you so much thank you i appreciate you having me have a great day you too miranda thank you